afternoon, everyone. My name is Sarita and I'm from the Consumer Investor Office at the Securities Commissions Malaysia. Welcome to our Digital Literacy for Seniors program. Today's webinar is on how to invest in bonds and sukuk online. On behalf of the SC, I wish to record our appreciation to higher seniors for their assistance in promoting this program. Next, please. We are pleased to have with us today Mr. Randy Tam from FF. FSM1 to present on the topic how to invest in bonds and sukuk online. Please allow me to share a brief, brief background on Randy Tam. Mr. Randy is FSM1's fixed income dealer since April 2019. He is responsible for dealing direct bonds across different currencies, mainly from the MYR bond space. He also provides bond trainings to end clients and financial advisors. Now, please stay tuned till the end of the session as we will be having a short Q&A session. This will be followed by a pop quiz session for all participants. As mentioned earlier, a total of RM1500 in online vouchers are up for grab. There will be five top winners and 20 cancellation prices. The winners will receive an email within 24 hours. Further to this, we would like to invite all the participants to take our survey. The link is shared in the chat window. Next, please. Please, allow, please do follow us on our social media platforms for useful information on investing and latest update on our initiative. Now, I'll pass over to Mr. Randy to share his presentation on how to invest in bonds and support online. Mr. Randy, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Um, good day to all of you. Happy to be here. And also, thank you for joining our webinar today. Okay, uh, let me try to share my screen in a bit. Uh. Okay, uh, I hope you guys had your lunch. And if you haven't, right, just, uh, you know, grab your lunch and just spend our time, spend your time with us and we learn this together. Okay, and also I'd like to take this opportunity to thank uh, SC Investmart for holding this meaningful, meaningful event. Okay, so just to introduce again, my name is Randy. I'm one of the bond dealers in FSM1. And, and if you... If you experience, uh, if you're investing for quite some time already, you might heard of our platform as well. And in fact, we've been operating in Malaysia for quite a number of years since 2008. Okay, so today's topic, I'll be going through with you all on how to invest in conventional bonds and also the Sharia compliant bonds named Suku online. Okay, through digital platform, especially in this digital era. Okay. So this is the um, a little disclaimer here, just just to share that uh any any bond name share here is not constitute any offers or solicitations to buy. Okay. Now, if I were to bring uh, deliver three key messages to the audience today, right? I'll truly truly hope that uh people from here will be able to comprehend the skill sets in learning what bonds are really about in terms of the pros and cons of it. Okay, and number two, uh, before you make any decisions in buying bonds, right, you will be able to know where to get the, the accessible uh, website and also uh, the most important thing is the reliable resources to find the bond information that you need. Okay, and thirdly, the most important thing is that you will need to protect yourself to prevent from being scammed in shots okay because we've just been spammed from you know online our friends around we just heard so many investment opportunities so this will be a good time for us to learn how to uh, invest in the legit ones okay so this is our agenda today uh, allow me just to uh, introduce our company for to for familiarizations and also uh, our, we will bring to the main point which is to introduce the fundamental of bonds from head to toe from a to z okay and also on the following sections i'll be going you through uh, on how you how and why you should invest with our fsm1 just want to show um the our websites for your for your understanding as well and also lastly we will also guide you through to how to be able to identify and also 
and also spot the warning signs for investment scams or frauds. Okay, not just to our, not just to yourself, but you can also share this message to your loved ones, your families, your friends, just to show some caring there. Okay. So now for those investors who are new to us, allow me to introduce our platform here. So in one sentence, we are the one-stop fintech wealth management online platform. Okay, we started off distributing Unitrust, which is our bread and butter. And since then, we have been moved on to a variety of investment products, okay, including retirement schemes, investment advisory services, over-the-counter bonds, and also some managed portfolio services. And we do also cover uh, the insurance products and also the most recently launched uh, KLSC stocks exchange platform, okay? And in short, right, we, we are the platform that provides all the most of the traditional investment products all in one place. So investors, they can just go to our website to, uh, to know more about, uh, to diversify their investments, okay? So um, speaking of our company, IFAS Capital, so FSM1 is actually the online distribution arm under IFAS Capital company. Okay, so IFAS Capital is licensed and also regulated by the Securities Commission for those capital market services. Okay, and since uh, Unitrust is our bread and butter, we also we is also registered with FIMM in relation to those Unitrust services. Okay, and we are also licensed and also under the supervision of Bank Negara Malaysia to conduct every financial advisory services. Okay, and we are also proud to be one of the participating organizations under Busan Malaysia to, to launch the uh, stock trading platform. Okay, so all of our companies' information and also the authorized uh, representative, like me, myself, right? It, the details of all can be assessed into uh, from Bank Negara website and also uh, SC. Uh, the Securities Commission websites. Okay, so our regulator make a uh, make a very good effort to to make it more transparent and also share to share to uh, our investors which is the legit or authorized uh, firms to transact and which are not. Okay. So thank you for spending time with us going through the uh, some background of our company. Now I will start off with the introducing what bonds are really about. And if you are the experienced uh, bond investor, right, just uh, take it as a refresh. Okay. So by definitions, uh, bonds can be defined as the debt instruments where investors like you and me we lend money into for the corporation for their funding capital requirement. And in return, they will the corporation they will pay back the principal at the maturity date, definitely with the periodic interest payment as well. So just imagine when a friend they come to you, they want to borrow money from you, and you will borrow the money to uh, you lend the money to them and say, uh, uh, you will need to pay me back, let's say four percent of interest payment to me every year. So this is how bonds are basically about. It's just like a debt instrument here, okay. And also, some of you may, may ask, why should I incorporate bonds into your investment portfolios? Because you might have diversified well enough with, you know, unit trust, insurance, equities, or even some, they even take uh, fixed deposit as a uh, investment uh, products, okay? Um, okay, so let me just try to share some benefits and also the the strength power when you invest in bonds, okay? So the first one is that you will have the visibility in receiving the cash flow with certainty, okay? Because like I mentioned, debts, I mean, bonds are just the debt instrument. When you lend money to someone, you will have the visibility in receiving the periodic uh, interest payment. So for bonds, right, the interest payout date will be every six months, okay? So from there, you will be able to see the money coming in and you can plan your cash flow uh, wisely. Okay, and also another thing is that in, interest payment in bonds, right, is actually computed in daily basis. So unlike fixed deposit, let's say you put your money in fixed deposit for one year, and suddenly out of nowhere you just want to withdraw it uh, out of uh, out of the bank. So uh, there's no penalty, of course, but you will just forfeit 
the interest payment that you should entitle to. But for bonds, right, that's not the case. You can just definitely buy on day one. And then after, let's say, 10 days after, you can definitely sell to the market to any other buyer. So you will still entitled to the 10 day interest payment that you, you are entitled to be. Okay. And also, bonds, uh, number two, bonds also bring the benefit of capital preservations. Okay. So don't be surprised. Bond has a price and also it can be traded in the market. Okay. But in terms of price volatility, right, um, I would say the bond price will just move in a minimum range of movement there. Okay, so for that kind of uh, uh, features there, right, bonds are, bonds are uh, called to be a stable and also safer investment assets. Okay, and the third point, it achieves diversification benefit. This is the most important element to investors like you and me. So if let's say we put our money, let's say 50% of our money in equity, right, in shares, right, and 50% in bond uh, bond direct bonds. Okay, so when the economy is doing well, you will definitely see some, you know, uptrend movement in your stock portfolios, right? While your bonds are still in a stable manner, you will receive the regular cash flow from there. Okay, that's fine. But what if, what if the economy is not that good, like, uh, like what are we facing now? So the you will you will definitely see some poor performance in your stock portfolio. But if you let's say if you are investing in a good credit bonds right the bond price will just stay there and you will still receiving every coupon payment that is paid by the issuer the company itself so from there we'll be able to see it's proven that the prices of stocks and bonds typically have the inverse relationship manner okay okay so these are the potential sources of income when you invest in bonds so the first component is definitely the coupon payment Coupon payment is just the uh, interest payment. It's just different naming issue. Okay, so the first uh, income will be your coupon payment. And also remember, I say bond can be traded, right? So if let's say you're looking to sell the bond uh, before the maturity date, you will be able to have the potential capital gains or losses there. Depends on your selling price. Okay, and the third element will be the reinvestment income, meaning when you receive your six months uh, coupon payment, right, you can use your money and deploy into some other assets. So remember our profound uh, elements in finance is the compounding factor, right? You can just keep your investment and your money rolling by putting into some other assets that you think is uh, suitable to you. So all these three elements constitute a total return for bond investment, okay? And also, before you make any investment decisions, right, you have to know what is your objective. So maybe for stocks, some is aiming for uh, short-term trading profit, and also some are aiming for long-term value investing. So for both, these are the, I would say, is the common, uh, common type of investor and also the objectives. So some, some people, they take bonds as the replacement of fixed deposits, especially in this kind of uh, low interest rate environment. Okay, I, I, I don't think because I just checked from a uh, website, right? I don't see there's any banks offering uh, close to 2% uh, annual interest rate. So by replacing your fixed deposit to uh, some saver bonds, right? You will definitely achieve a higher return from there. Okay, and also for some retiree, they are still, they are just invest bonds to have the steady cash flow and also uh, be a good tool to hedge against the infl inflation. Okay, and... And also the third part, uh, I remember back in the days where my parents, they want to uh, prepare my education funds during my university, right? They would just, they have no option but to invest, to put the money into the so-called insurance endowment plan. Now with bonds, you can also, you know, sort of diversify and also plan long-term planning goal with the, with, uh, you know, to plan your education, your next generation education uh, cash uh, funding. Okay, and also you can definitely provide some, uh, prepare some cash flow for specific needs like traveling or even pay the uh, insurance premium there. Okay, so this is just the example for your guidance. Okay, now after going through all the good sides of uh, bonds, right? Uh, one thing I will always highlight is that there's no free lunch on this planet. 
Okay, if you are seeing some investment products that is giving you beyond the risk-free rate, right? There's definitely some risk that you need to look into. Okay, so here are the common uh, risk features when you invest in bonds. Okay, the first one is the interest rate risk. Okay, so by definition, interest rate risk is the risk where your value of bond, meaning the price of your bonds, uh, will act in the opposite directions when due to the changes of interest rate. In a simple term, meaning when interest rate goes up, right, your bond price will drop down. Then it will affect your so-called your uh, mark to market uh, value there. Okay, let me give you an example. Let's say if you are buying a bond today, today in this low interest rate environment, and then maybe two to three years after, when economy starts to recover, right, then uh, the central bank Malaysia they will definitely increase the increase the interest rate to curb the overheating of the economy. So by increasing the interest rate, right, the potential uh, you know, return is higher for new bond issuers. That's why the existing, the existing bond holders, they will just sell off the old bonds and then to subscribe with a higher return once. Okay, so this will cause the existing bond price to be, to be dropping. Okay, this is how it goes. Okay, and the second risk is the liquidity risk. Liquidity risk simply means is the case of bonds are not like stocks. You will have no sort of the central place uh, exchange for you to transact. Okay, it is deal based on willing buyer, willing seller basis. So if let's say you want to sell the bond in between, right, you will need to say whether they say a ready buyer that is willing to buy for these sizes and also at your desired price. Okay, so this will what we so call the liquidity risk. Okay. Okay, and also for credit risk, I would say it's the most crucial one because if you are, I mean, if you are lending money to someone, right? So you are actually having concerns on their credit worthiness and also their ability in paying you back the money in terms of coupon and also principal. So let's say me, myself, I have, you know, two car loans and I, I just want to expand my business. I want to buy a few more houses for rental, for own staying. And I want someone to buy some, uh, you know, commercial lots for business business expansions. So from bank perspective, right, they will they will view me as a uh, high credit risk uh, client because my my CITOS record will not be that beautiful, right? So they will just price in the higher risk of uh, credit. Okay. And if let's say I fail my business and I'm I'm able unable to pay back the interest payment, the installment loans, this kind of stuff, right? Then I will subject to default risk, meaning I have no choice but to declare bankruptcy. Okay, so in uh, when it translates to bonds, right, it means there is a risk for companies who are unable to pay for coupon payment and the repayment of principal on time. Okay, so these are the risks that we will need to be concerned. But as long as you are investing with a good, uh, strong credit profile uh, issuer, right, then the risk will be uh, will be minimal. Okay. And also, if you are if you are on a intermediate level for bond investment, right? There are definitely some you know you can definitely do some analysis and also do some homework when you want to choose which bond you want to buy. Okay, so if you are good at accounting figures, you can always check on their balance sheet to see uh, how how is their debt level in a whole as a whole, and also what is their debt maturity profile B. Okay, and another thing we will need to look at is whether the company, the issuer, has uh, sufficient cash generating assets to be able to generate sufficient income to cover the bonds and also the interest payment. Okay, and also dive deep into the bond structure itself, right? Some bonds, it can, it can be guaranteed by third-party insurer. So one of the examples would be Tana Jamin. They are the uh, financial insurers for some corporations, okay? And also for some bond, they can also have some sort of the collateral or even securities to be pledged into the bond itself. So the bonds itself will be sold off to fully pay back the bondholders if let's say default case happens, okay? 
And if you want to look into a broader picture here, you can definitely look from a top-down uh, approach. You can see how is the market doing and how is the country risk and also what is the industry risk, etc. Okay, but all this information you can also source from you know third-party websites like like uh, Fund Supermarket. We also provide some research article out there. Okay, so now up to tip at this point, I believe uh, we all will have at least some concepts regarding what bonds are really about. Okay, so here I list down a few of common questions that you might have in mind. Okay, so here I will just try to answer in a sentence of two to keep it simple. But if let's say you need more clarification, right, you can definitely raise it during the Q&A session and I'll explain more from there. Okay, so number one, are bonds returns or principal guaranteed? This one is definitely no. Okay, although bonds, bonds are classified as a safer assets, but it's still not a principal guarantee investment. The, it will still subject to the uh, you know, capability and also the ability to repay the uh, interest payment and also the principal. Okay, and number two, what's the difference between buying bonds through FSM1 and banks? Are my security safe? Okay, mm, that's a good one. Okay, FSM1 is not a bank. Okay, so as such, uh, your assets, investment asset has to be uh, uh, parked under our register and also uh, legit custodian bank. Okay, so, so in the case, let's say FSM1, they they uh, seizes from operation, right? Let's say Touchwood, they, they uh, declare bankruptcy and I lose my job, right? Then the creditors of FSM1, they will not have any rights in claiming clients as that so that your access will be well protected, okay? And also number three, must I hold the bonds that I bought until maturity? Can I sell my bonds before that? Okay, if you pay attention to my previous, I mean, my, my uh, presentation just now, you can even answer on your own. So bonds can be traded, bond has a price, you're not necessary to hold it before, uh, hold it until maturity. You can definitely sell anytime before that, okay? And number four, where can I find more about bonds other than FSM1, okay? So for Ringgit, Malaysia Ringgit Bonds, right? We have a website that you might be familiar with, which is called Bix Malaysia Bonds and Suku Information Exchange. So this website is the government uh, information platform to provide free public assets to all of our investors like you and me to provide, to provide you know, Malaysia Ringgit Bonds uh, information. But if let's say you're looking looking for bonds beyond Malaysia market, right? There's another website called Bond Supermarket where it's the global leading uh, bond depository uh, platform. It provides more than ringgit bonds information. It covers uh, foreign currency like USD, Sing dollar, etc. Okay. And the fifth one is uh, what happened if a bond defaults? Okay. Uh, for this one, right? Uh, if a bond defaults, it will be a very painful and also lengthy process, but generally speaking, there are two scenarios that can happen. So the first one is that the issuer, they can restructure and also modify the bond uh, terms, okay? They can either extending the maturity date of the bond or they can even lower down the coupon rate of the bond to make them to be able to slowly recover back the obligation, okay? But all those prepositions, right? All those proposals has to be approved by the existing bondholders and also by the high court there, okay? But if let's say the company really fails to make any payment, they, they just can't afford to, to uh, keep their operation going concern, right? That they, the last resort will be just declare bankruptcy and they will just liquidate uh, whatever asset they have and distribute all those proceeds to the uh, creditors and also bondholders. Okay, so that covers the uh, fundamental of bonds. I hope you guys have, have some better idea of it. Now, uh, I'll, allow me to take this opportunity to introduce our FSM1 platform and what, what you can see from our platform there, okay? Okay, before that, right, let me try to um, introduce you all about our Malaysia bond market landscape. 
Okay, so traditionally, back in the days, bonds are only being offered by the investment banks and also the private wealth division. Okay, so the fee structure from them, right, is not transparent because the fees will normally be quoted inside bond price itself. So investors, they wouldn't know how much are they being really charged and also what is the exact transacted bond price. So they can't really do comparison among different banks here okay so this is one of the uh, i would say challenges and also another thing is that if you are buying bonds through banks right you will need to there is a minimum threshold for you to meet so for ringgit bonds right you will need to buy a, a minimum of one lot which is 250,000 ringgit okay so um to be honest it can be quite a uh, barrier or, or you know threshold for uh, investor like me I can't even buy 0.5 lot there okay so uh, with this kind of threshold right bonds are offered to those uh, sophisticated and also high net worth individuals okay and also with banks are the only uh, liquidator provider and also the distributor right mm, for bonds the market efficiency I would say is not uh, not that healthy so with that this is the challenges that uh, Malaysia bond market is facing, okay? But with all these uh, challenges, right, on our platform, you wouldn't see such cases, okay? So, so on our platform, we have a marketplace which is called Bond Express, okay? So Bond Express, where FSM1 is the distributor in distributing the bonds that are, that are on our list there, we provide 24-7 live trading and also... Uh, all the transaction can be done with instant uh, instant transactions here, okay? And most importantly, we make full disclosures to our prices and also our fee structure online, okay? And also another thing, you can just trade as low as from 1,000 nominal value and also 5,000 nominal value, okay? So you can see, uh, you know, we just try to open up to let more, you know, retail investors to participate and also to get to know more about bonds, okay? So under our Bond Express, we have two categories here. One is called retail bonds, and also another one is called wholesale bonds, okay? So for retail bond, retail bonds is actually under our Securities Commission seasoning, seasoning framework, okay? So this is the framework to, to, uh, to you know, provide a list of bonds with good, strong credit profile to get our investor to invest with a peace of mind, okay? So there are definitely a, a list of criteria in order to be listed in retail bond list, okay? So I'm just going to name a few. So the bond issuer has to be either banks or listed company in Malaysia, okay? And to prove they have the strong credit profile, right, all the bonds has to be rated by our local rating agency, Okay, with the high investment grade of single A. This is considered the top tier, I mean the, the higher rank of the uh, investment ranking here. Okay, and also with that, you can just invest as low as 1,000, which is a very convenient and also accessible uh, investment here. Okay, and if let's say you want to look beyond uh, retail bond framework, right, you can also check out our wholesale bond where we, uh, we covers not just ringgit bond and also US dollar and also sing dollar papers. And also the, the nominal size to transact is, will be just as low as 5,000 nominal value. Okay. Okay, so uh, just to share, we have, we have quite a strong connections with all the counterparty uh, in bond market. We have, we have more than 20 counterparties in, the, uh, in terms of transacting bonds to make sure that we'll be able to provide clients with better pricing and also better liquidity there, okay? And also, uh, just now I mentioned, we make full disclosure on our pricing and also our fee structure here. So investing through FSM1, right, we will only incur two types of fees here. One is called the processing fee for every bond transactions. And also another one is called platform fee, okay? Platform fee is just like the custodian fee, the custody fee to safeguard your asset under our appointed custodian bank here, okay? And other than that, we also provide other valuable services like we provide a research paper to our investor and we also provide the supporting investment tool to 
ease and also smoothen uh, the investment path. Okay, and we also provide the online consolidated holding statements because we provide many types of investment products, right? So when you want to track and also monitor your portfolio performances, right? You can always look lock into your holding statement and you can see how's your unit trust performing and how's your bond performing, etc. Okay. Okay, so these these are just just some uh, you know special features that we provide on our platform. Okay, so you can definitely start off with selecting the bonds based on your personal preference and also the criteria. Let's say you want to invest in a uh, short tenor of bond, let's say less than five years, and you're looking for the coupon rate between four to six percent. And you, you can even choose uh, whether you want to invest in the conventional bonds or the Sharia compliant ones, okay? So we, we provide many, uh, you know, filtering and also screening criteria for you to, to filter, okay? And also this, I would say, is our, our most valuable services. We have our own in-house research team to provide uh, write-ups and also research articles to, to all of the investors. We cover from introductory sections and we also cover the market outlooks down to the individual credit analysis that is on our Bond Express. Okay, so from all this investment, right, we can, we will, our research team will also make some judgment on what can you consider to buy and also what is too risky to hold and so on and so forth. Okay, so with all these, uh, we, with all these uh, articles available, right, I would just say it's free and also publicly accessible to all. So if you have time, just go in there and then explore some, okay. Okay, this is our uh, sample of the bond fact sheet. You'll be able to see the bond name, some simple bond information, and also the pricing discovery available. Okay, you can even download the full documents of this issuance if you want to understand more from there. Okay, I can show you in a demo later. And we also provide the uh, bond calculators for you to calculate uh, uh, the the estimated return or even how much you will need to pay before you make any decision, okay? So let's say from one bond, you can see how much you are actually paying for processing fee and also how much total payable you need to pay with, you know, with pricing disclosure and also fee disclosure here. And in the end, you will be able to foresee how much uh, coupon payment you, you should be receiving and also what is the principle that you can receive upon maturity and your analyzed, analyzed return will also be stated in the bond calculator, okay? And also just want to highlight all the features that I shared just now, right, are free and also publicly accessible to all of you. You don't even have to open an account, open an account to log in to take some sort of subscription in order to view all this information. So just, uh, we are just trying to make the the transparency and also the awareness to all of the uh, investors. So just feel free to check out on our website, okay? So uh, from here, right, let me, let me try to uh, you know, show you some demo on how you can transact bonds on our platform with less than two minutes, okay? So this is our, our website here. We cover many, uh, many other investment products. So when, let's say you want to buy the bonds under the Bond Express retail bonds tab, right? You can just go to it and you will be able to see a full list of bond that is eligible here. Okay, and we provide full disclosure of pricing and also return with the available volume size. Okay, and you can even click into, click into the bond fact sheet to know more. Okay, this is the bond name and you should be able to see all the quotation being put in the market, which is not, uh, not a transactable one, but also for your indicative reference. Okay, you can also view the simple bond information like, like when is their issue date, when is their maturity date. Okay, and if there's any special features in, in this bond, you can also have a look at it. Okay, performance chart, U chart for you to make comparison.
Okay, some special features embedded inside this board. Okay, when you make up your mind, you can just click buy to proceed with your order. So you can see the bond, the bond prices is being quoted and just input how much you want to buy. Okay, see, I mean, just do final checking on how much you are buying and how much you are being charged, etc. And also, do not forget to view the TNC and also some uh, useful information that is downloadable. Okay, the offering circular for this issuance and also some risk disclosure statements. Okay, when you're okay with it, just agree and check out. Then just want to make sure that you are transferring from your own personal account. Okay, then you will receive a OTP code. Then you, once you click on it, then you'll be able to transact. So it's just as simple as that. Okay. And next, uh, I'll just show you, just a second. And second, I'll just show you, uh, let's say you, you want to buy some bonds out of our Bond Express, but you want to place an order through us. So in this case, we will act as a broker to help you source the bond. So how can you do that? You can just go to the bond, uh, bond screener list there. Just type what are the bonds you want to buy. Then just click on the fact sheet to check it out. Okay. And you can see uh, we do not have any offer on our platform. Then uh, we, we also provide the indicative quotation by market. So you can just click transact. And see, there's a minimum threshold for you to meet. You can even place a market order or limit order with your desired price here. Okay, preview your order and then uh, same thing, same thing, just check out, uh, preview your order again, cross check and see whenever it's good, then you just agree to check out. Okay, so we provide here two business model. You can definitely place through us as a broker or you can directly buy a bond under our Bond Express. Okay, uh, thank you also for spending our, your time with you know, going through our FSM1 uh, features. And next, I'll be going through with you all how to spot and also identify the potential investment scams and what are the warning signs from it, okay? Okay, so these are the key points when you want to, and when you see, you know, someone approach you and providing you some, uh, you know, investment opportunity, what kind of, uh, you know, keywords that you can look into. So for myself, right, uh, I will, I will say I will have my own lines of defense, okay, when someone approach me and also they want to pitch me to sell something, okay. So uh, my first line of defense is definitely never approach and uh, no, never get to all those unsolicited offers. Meaning to say, if you are seeing some cold calls calling to you and to show you some investment offer or even they WhatsApp you or even they, you know, use your approach, your Facebook, your Instagram to introduce you some product that you don't even know that guy, right? You need to, you know, activate your defensive mode already. This is my first line of defense, okay? But, but if let's say, I mean, unfortunately, the guys is really you know, good at pitching or even he's good looking, right? Then, then I mean, my, my first line of defense might be broken. Then you need to set up your second line of defense, okay? So if let's say they are showing you, they are pitching you, they are, that they can provide you a guaranteed and also a superior return, right? Like the advertisement that we see just now, they can give you 50% of return in just one month. They just doesn't make sense, right? So you have to, you know, switch your defensive mode into your cautious mode here, okay? To, to be able to, you know, be, you know, keep yourself in a composure manner and also be rational, okay? But if let's say we are, you are really into it, right? There's another last, uh, last resort here, my third line of defense. If he is asking you to deposit the money, into his personal account, right? Or even the company name that is different from what you are seeing under the register platform. Then this is the, this is the uh, last line of defense already. If you transfer the money into the personal account, right? Then, then I would say uh, unfortunate event might happen here. So remember, never transfer the money into the 
into any personal bank account for investment. Okay, this is the most important thing because, I mean, human nature we are instinctively uh, greedy and we are we are easily and also emotionally driven. So make sure make sure you have a set of rules to keep yourself uh, calm and also know what you are doing. Be rational. Okay. And from here, I would like to share uh, also our our regulator, SC and also Bank of Thailand Malaysia. They provide all the uh, sufficient information to prevent ourselves from being scammed. Okay, so let's say for example on SC website, right? They provide the investor alert list which covers all those uh, financial firms that are unregulated and also unregistered. So you are seeing some name that is under this list, right? You should be aware. Okay, or even you can check on the Bank Nagara website, like I shared to you just now. See who are the approved and also licensed financial advisor for you to, uh, you know, place order with them uh, comfortably. Okay, and also just to share, if you were to transfer or deposit the money into the financial firm, right? Make sure the account name is registered under the client trust account, because for regulation purpose, right? Clients' money has to be segregated from the company's uh, bank uh, money itself. It has to be segregated. So, if let's say you are transferring money into FSM one, right? You have to make sure the account name is under our registered company name, IFAS Capital, and also park under the red, uh, client trust account, not IFAS uh, company bank account. Yeah. Okay. So this is the thing you need to make sure, and also never, never share your personal details to the people that you don't even know. Okay. Sensitive information, IC, bank account, or even they they want to you know use your computer to do transaction, not to give them. Okay. Okay, so this is the uh, just to share also. This is the website that I mentioned that can provide you more bond information and also discovery process. So uh, our SC platform will be Bix Malaysia. They provide all the ringgit bonds information that is issued in Malaysia. Okay. And also, if you were to explore to uh, foreign market, right, you can always check out Bond Supermark. It's a repository of, you know, bond information and also related content that covers uh, more than more than five currency here. Okay. So if you and they both of these website, they are also providing the educational content for us to know more about bonds. Okay. So I think it covers. Okay. Just want to recap. I mean, I'm closing to my presentations already. So just want to recap what we have learned. So I hope that uh, you, you'll be able to know, at least have the concept on what bonds are really about and you'll know where to find the relevant bond information with uh, reliable sources, okay? And also always protect yourself from investment scams. Protect yourself, protect your friends and also protect your loved ones. Okay, so uh, I guess that's all from my sharing. Thank you for your attention and thank you for your time. So um, I guess we can continue with the q and A section, Frida. Okay, thank you very much, Randy, for the very informative uh, presentation. So now we'll move on to the uh, Q&A section. So we'll just, uh, perhaps you can just take some time to look through the questions on Slido and pick a few to answer. Okay, okay, sure. Let me take a look. Um, see, most of the answer, uh, I mean, most of the questions are answered by my uh, my colleague. Mm, let me see. Do you see any question that is unanswered? Because I see most of it, I mean, most of it has been, uh, you know, resolved already. Let me see. Yes, actually, um, okay, yeah. <laughs> so actually, most of it has been answered, but perhaps... Uh, mm... Okay, I see, I see a new one. Okay, yep. is the bond investor secured on on secured unsecured creditors? Okay, this is a uh, a good question. Okay, so for bonds, right? Uh, different bonds have different seniority. This is what we call so seniority, meaning to say, is just the ranking of repayment when when the issuer, the company itself, you know, declare bankruptcy. So some bonds, 
it will be secured, meaning it has the uh, collateral or securities being pledged here. So for some bonds, definitely it will have the unsecured uh, features, meaning uh, they has no any other asset to be to be collateralized. Okay, so in that sense, right, the uh, investment risk will be slightly higher compared to the secured ones. Okay, so I hope I answered the questions. Okay, second point, which bond is tax exempted? Okay, so for ringgit bonds, right, be it uh, government bonds or corporate bonds, right, for individual, right, the uh, coupon interest income and also the capital uh, appreciation, right, is not taxable, it's tax exempted. Okay, uh, another question from Akbar. Our current religious situations, bonds or shares? <laughs> uh, okay, I'm not in a very good position in uh, you know, giving you advice, but uh, my, just my two cents, uh, you have to know your investment objective and to make sure your investment portfolio is well diversified. Okay, make sure when the economy is on a downturn, make sure you have some uh, you know, safer asset to be able to Hedge all this, uh, all this, uh, you know, uncertainty. Okay, I think all the other questions have been answered. So perhaps we will move on to the uh, next uh, session. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Let me see. Okay, I'm seeing a question from uh, Zoom as well. Is it safer to buy a UOB Malaysia bond compared to UOB Singapore bond? Uh, okay, different currency, the exposure is also going to be different. Okay, so for banks, right, they are, I mean, if you are very on the intermediate level, right, you need to go into their balance sheet and also their financial performance to see whether which one is a good one to buy. And also, let's say if you are buying into a Singapore bond that is uh, coated in different currency, right, you will also have uh, FX exposure that you will need to look into. Okay, hope I answered that. Are there any more? Let me see. Okay, I'm seeing another question from from uh, a attendees, mm, what's the difference between FSM one and also any others like public mutual? Okay, so um, like I mentioned, uh, I mean traditionally uh, bonds are being offered by banks, right? So normally, normally they will just you know uh, provide like I mentioned just now the fee structure is might not be that transparent, but. I mean, I'm not saying well, you know which one is good, which one is bad, but it's just that uh, if you if you need those uh, you know advisor assisted uh, base, right? You can definitely let those uh, you know relationship manager or salesperson to come to you and give you the suitable advice. So uh, our platform we provide the online transaction for you to you know make your own investment uh, uh, journey here. Thank you everyone for joining us today and FSM1 for speaking in our webinar. Don't forget, if you wish to watch this webinar again, we will upload the webinar on our YouTube channel in due course. Do check out our previous webinar sessions on our YouTube channel as well. Before we end this session, just a quick reminder to all to only deal with licensed or registered entities or individuals and to always check the SS investor LNDs before investing. If you are unsure, do not hesitate to contact the SC. And also, as mentioned by Randy earlier, always remember to never, de never deposit money in uh, individual bank accounts, even if they are licensed or registered with authorities. Okay, with that, stay home and stay safe, everyone. And if you need to go out, always maintain physical distancing. Hope to see everyone again in our next webinar. Thank you.